I want to read just two verses to you. Exodus chapter 4, verses 2 and 3. Exodus chapter 4, verses 2 and 3. When I came home, I was talking to my dad and we spent a little time together. And he was sharing with me some of the things that are on his heart in regards to this verse of Scripture and his insight of it. And I got so excited and encouraged. I said, I'm going to preach that this Sunday morning. I just felt like God wanted to do something. And even though I'm not going to preach very long, thank you for not saying amen right there. You've made me feel good. But I believe even though I'm just going to be encouraging you and preaching for a few minutes, I really believe God is going to do something very significant over these next few minutes. Something big is about to happen. Something big is about to happen. So let's look at these two verses, Exodus chapter 4, verses 2 and 3. The Lord said to Moses, what is in your hand? And he said, a rod, a staff. And God said to him, cast it on the ground. And as he cast it on the ground, it became a serpent. And Moses fled from before it. Let's go on one more verse. And then the Lord said, put forth your hand and take it by the tail He put forth his hand and caught it, and it became a rod or a staff in his hand again. Now, this text gives us the the event, the supernatural, sovereign event of Moses throwing his staff down on the ground. It turns to a serpent. He grabs it by the tail. It becomes a staff again. And God was asking Moses to do this as a way of showing the children of Israel and then eventually Pharaoh and all of Egypt that God was with Moses, that his power was at work in his life, that his hand was heavy upon his life. But there is another reason of spiritual significance. There's something else in this other than the obvious, and that is what I want to spend a few minutes talking to you about this morning and bringing your attention to. So are you ready to hear what God has to say to you today? This staff of Moses, this rod, represented, as all staffs do symbolically throughout the Scripture, it represented authority. Everybody shout authority. But not only did it represent authority, it specifically represented Moses' authority. That's going to be a key here in just a moment. So it didn't just represent authority, it represented specifically his authority. It was this staff that he lifted up, and Jethro's flock, sheep, came to him and followed him. It was this rod, and I'm about to preach, so I need your help, New Beginnings. It was this staff that he held up, and God parted the waters of the Red Sea. So it did not just represent authority, but specifically the authority that God had given Moses. So as Moses takes this rod, this staff, and he lets it go, he puts it on the ground. That's going to be a key. Hold on to that. He lets it go and puts it on the ground. It immediately turns into a serpent. And you know that the serpent represents Satan. It's his ability like a snake to slither around in your life, to hiss at you, to bite you, to poison you, not only to attack you, but for those attacks to prevail against you. Ah. And this is why Moses had to pick it up by the tail, because if he'd have picked it up by the head, he would have been bitten. So as he lets go of his staff, this serpent manifests himself. And the symbolism of that, and hear me today, is that whenever you make a decision to relinquish your authority and to set it down, it always releases the devil to manifest himself in your life. When you lose your authority, you lose the serpent. And you allow the enemy to begin to poison you, bite you, hiss at you, and intimidate you. You allow him not only to come against you, but those attacks begin to prevail against you. And whether you're here in this room or you're watching today, uh, whatever medium you may be watching on television or online, I have a feeling that there's some people who've been going through some stuff. I'm going to say that again. I hope you're shouting at home. I said some people have been going through some stuff. If you're living, breathing, if you woke up this morning, you're probably going through some stuff. And some of you have been in a season of stuff. 
Some of y'all have only been in it for two weeks, two months, but some of y'all been in it for two or more years. And there's some people in here, and when I nail your problem, you ought to shout because it's about to shift. Some of you have been under a spiritual attack. You don't know why you feel what you feel. There's no rhyme. There's no reason. It's not like there's anything specifically you can point out, but there's just some kind of it on you. And your mind is under an attack. Your emotions are under an attack. The enemy's trying to snatch your joy and steal your peace. You don't sleep at night like you're supposed to. You've got this heavy, oppressive thing on you. You're slipping and sinking into deep depression and deep despair. Some of you, your money is under an attack. Some of you have your health that's come under an attack. It seems like sickness and infirmity is ruling and reigning in your body. Some of you, your family is under an attack. The enemy's trying to bring division between you and your family. Some of you have a business that's under an attack, or maybe you're under an attack at your job. But every one of us in here is going through something where either sickness and infirmity, poverty and lack, a bondage, an addiction, generational curse, family iniquity, some form of hopelessness and impossibility is trying to prevail against you. And I know because you love God, and you better shout at me here, I know you've been praying. Oh, yes, I do. I know you've been on your knees. I know you've been crying out to God, calling out to God. You've been asking God to intervene and turn that thing around. I know you have. And I know you've been doing the best you can to stand in faith and to speak the word of God over your life. But there still hasn't been any turnaround. There's been no change. There's been no breakthrough. And you've done the best you can to believe God and to stand in the promises of God, but you haven't seen the kind of turnaround, and it seems like the serpent is loosed in your life. Can I submit to you that it's possible that the devil has been released to manifest himself in your life and that the serpent has been loosed to attack your life simply because you've laid your staff down? There's a difference between praying and walking in authority. There's a difference between hoping and decreeing. There's a difference between, oh, I wish I had it, hope I maybe someday could, and saying, thus says the Lord, over your own life. Maybe, I feel like preaching today. I came on a long vacation full of the word today. I came to tell you that possibly things are not turning in your favor simply because you have relinquished your authority. Pastor Jonathan, I don't know if that's true. Let me ask you a couple questions. Let's do some examination here. Do you still have your old-fashioned swag? That swagger? It says, no matter what I feel, no matter what's going against me, God is for me. Therefore, nothing can truly be against me. Do you still have that brash, bold confidence in God that you laugh at everything the devil does at you? Or does everything the devil do make you cry? Preaching better than you're shouting. Where is the boldness? Where is the courage? Where is the ability to stand undaunted and unwavering in faith and say, I don't care what it looks like. God is in control. Do you have your swag? Psalm 107 says, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. And that word so is a complicated word. It's a powerful word. It means to decree and to declare to determine and to decide, to appoint and to answer. Are you declaring and decreeing? Are you determining or deciding? Or is circumstances determining and deciding? Have you been appointing joy for sorrow? Have you been appointing praise for heaviness? Have you been answering every demonic attack by a thus saith the Lord? Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. You've lost your say so. You've lost your say so. You've let your staff fall to the ground. And some of you can look back and point to the exact time and place where you lost it. 
And others of you, the process has been so subtle, you can't identify the place or the time when you lost it. But I came to identify something, and that is time has a way of tiring you out. Time is an adversary. And when you stand in faith and you believe and you don't see the turnaround, you don't see the breakthrough, it is only a matter of time that your faith gets weak. And I'm looking at some of you today, and you better shout here because you're going to get free. Some of you are now weary spiritually. You're weary emotionally. Thank God for the three people that are honest. You're weary in every area of your life because when you don't see a turnaround, it's only a matter of time before hopelessness begins to set in. And you become uh, disillusioned and you become disheartened and you become heart sick and you lose hope. And in that process, whether subtly or you can identify it, some of you have let go of your authority. You've let go of that ability to stand and declare the word of God over your life. Well, God has sent me here today and he sent me into your home to do one simple but powerful thing. I came to help you today get your authority back. You say, well, Pastor Jonathan, how do I get my authority back? That sounds great. Pick it up. You chose to set it down. Now choose to pick it up. You know, it's amazing to me that the moment Moses grabs that serpent by the tail, his authority is restored. But guess what else happened? The snake disappeared. I came to prophesy to you that if you pick up your authority today, the devil's going to turn into Houdini, and he's going to pull the biggest disappearing act in the history of your life. If you just grab that sucker by the tail and say, I'm getting my staff back up in the air. I'm getting my power, my swag, my boldness, my... Whoop! The devil is about to... You better take five seconds and praise him. There's a shifting in this atmosphere. I just felt it. That doesn't mean that he's not going to attack you. What it means is that attack will no longer prevail. And maybe the only reason you've got him slithering and around in your life is because you have yet to make a conscious decision. Uh uh. I'm going to pick that thing up by the tail and I'm going to watch what the enemy meant to harm me turn into my power, into my dominion, and into my. I came to help somebody pick your staff back up today. so I need to get my authority back and I need to pick it up. Thank you, Pastor Jonathan. That's a great word. But how do I pick my authority back up? I'm looking for a staff around the church today. How do I pick it up? You know, sometimes in the scripture there are mysteries and there are depths of the spirit. But sometimes, church, and please look at me, sometimes things are really simple. If you want to turn a light on, flip the switch. I must first understand how electricity works and the power flows. No, you don't. Who cares? I must analyze and evaluate why that switch will... No, 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 just flip the thing on. How do I get my authority back? Pick it up. Flip the switch. There has to be a conscious decision. When somebody makes a decision to lose weight and work out, it doesn't start by not eating bad foods. It starts by a decision. And this is why most of the time I don't diet, because she's made up my mind for me. Because she'll tell you once I get something in my head, come hell or high water, I'm doing it. It don't start by cutting out the calories and going to the gym. We stop going to the gym and we stop cutting out the calories because we really haven't made a conscious decision that we're going to change the way we're living. And some of you want authority and you want change, but you have yet been persuaded to rise up in faith and say, I'm going to walk out of this moment differently than the way I walked in. I'm walking out of here with my staff in my hand. 
What if there was a psychological, spiritual, and emotional shift in your thinking to say today, I'm going to be what God called me to be, and I'm going to do what he called me to do, and I'm going to have what he called me to have. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. If God be for me, who can be against me? Who can separate me from the love of God? Something on the inside of you, and I feel God in this place, has to happen in you. That switch, that light has to come on. Where you say today, I am going to raise up my staff. And I'm going to stand in my rightful place of authority. And I'm going to declare, as for me in my house, we shall serve the Lord. Stick your chest out, square your shoulders, raise your staff. Stand in your rightful place of authority today and decree that sickness doesn't have any place in my body, in my house, in my family, those that are of me and attached to me. Sickness, you've got to get up out of here and go. Raise your staff. Some of you, need to raise your staff today and decree this mind is off limits to depression, to despair, to anxiety, peace in my mind, joy in this mind, rest in it. I'm going to go home and sleep tonight. Some of you need to raise your staff today and stand in authority and shut down the voices of the enemy that are trying, and I'm so glad Pastor Brian talked about it, connection to the body. Connection to the body. There is such a place called scent. The pool of Siloam where the blind man washed. The interpretation of that word is scent. Now, I'm not a preacher, and I... (laughs) been affected by this before and I've seen people damaged if someone leaves a church it's like God they're not going to go to heaven anymore if they leave that church that's garbage you can go to heaven you can be blessed I've seen pastors and we're not going to say who but we've seen pastors in our past who have cursed people for leaving and said they're never going to walk in their destiny that's garbage that's garbage you can be blessed and you can go serve God and you can do wherever God puts you and all that but you also have to understand at the same time there's a, there's a balance to that. That there are good places, but there are also sent places. I watched today our praise and worship team, and I watched Minister Ashlyn, and I'll talk to her more about this after service, some of the things that I saw. She can sing. She's anointed. She's gifted. But I saw her today in a role of raising up other worshipers. And I saw her standing off to the side with her hands lifted, blessing them. She'd be singing in any other church. She'd be worshiping. She'd be in love with Jesus. She wouldn't be married to Isaac. So I don't know if you want to thank me for that or not, but you're welcome nonetheless. But what God is doing on her And what God is doing through her and in our worship team is because it's a sent place. So you can get a blessing anywhere you want to go, but is it the blessing or is it a blessing? You better be careful leaving the sent place because there's some stuff that will not wash off of you if you're not in the sent place. Be careful substitute or mistaking the voice of the enemy for the voice of God. Be careful mistaking the voice of contemptible, disgruntled, irritable, rebellious Christians as your spiritual authority and your spiritual counsel. Don't let the devil talk you out of your pool. If this is your sent place, come hell or high water, I'm going to stand in my pool. You may want me to be your friend, and I'd love to be your friend, but I'd rather be your pastor. Because believe me, friends don't benefit from me. But the anointing that God's given me all my life to declare and decree the word of God over you will slap your life straight upside the head, turn it inside out, upside down, and you'll never be the same again. I need to be your pastor. I need to raise my staff. And you better not get out of your pool if this is where God sent you. 
If you're offended by what I said, then you've already jumped out of the pool. So you might as well dry off and make your way down the road. Pastor, that's so harsh. No, I'm just trying to, I'm just trying to do what God called us to do. And those that are getting in the pool, get in it. And let's see God move mountains, heal the sick, deliver the bound and the oppressed. Let's see God bless so good that those blessings overwhelm us and overtake us. Sometimes you got to raise your staff and say, I'm not going to let that voice talk me out of my pool. I'm not going to let that voice talk me out of my destiny. I'm not going to let that voice talk me out of the power and the anointing that God has reserved for me. I'm going to stay right where God sent me to be. Somebody needs to raise their staff today. And someone needs to stand in their rightful place of authority. And declare that peace is mine. Prosperity is mine. Blessing is mine. Joy is mine. Health is mine. Deliverance is mine. Favor is mine. Doors of opportunity are opening. Raise your staff and stand in authority. I'm almost done. I promise you can stay standing for those of you that are. I'm going to do it right now. I'm going to raise my staff as your pastor. And I'm going to decree over you that you are the head and not the tail above only and not beneath. I'm going to decree that you're blessed in the city, blessed in the field, blessed when you come and blessed when you go. I declare that the blessing of the Lord that makes rich and adds no sorrow is hunting you down like a dog that caught a scent. I declare to you today, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I declare you are not an overcomer. No, you're not. You're more than an overcomer. I raise my staff and I declare today that favor is yours. That goodness and mercy is following you for all of your days. I declare you about to come up, come over, come through and go right in. You better take 30 seconds and give him some praise in here today. Oh, lift up your staff. Stand in your rightful place of authority. And decree I am what God said I am. Some things, as you stand, we pray for. Prayer is a petition. Prayer is asking. Now, I want, I want Chris, Chris Davis to come here. Come here. Take this. I ask you right now. To give me my Bible. Chris, I ask you right now to give me my Bible. Chris, give me my Bible. Please. Let me pray in tongues. Please give me my Bible. Chris is looking at me like God looks at you. We have this confidence that when we ask, we've received. Watch what happens. Please give me my Bible. I have my Bible. It's in my hand. I hold it. I possess it. It's mine. If you've asked for healing, you've asked for favor, you've asked for deliverance, We have this confidence that when we ask, we receive. Stop asking and start thanking Him for what you're holding. Interesting that God, when this conversation began in Exodus 4 from our text, He said to Moses, what do you have in your hand? Why didn't God say, you see that staff in your hand? You know what that shows us? Moses had something that he wasn't even aware of that he had. He was in possession of something that he didn't even recognize. That healing is yours. That joy is yours. That favor is yours. That breakthrough is yours. 
want the worship team to come up because we're going to have five minutes of warfare kind of church. Yes, we are. Yes, we are. Yes, we are. And we declare today as we say goodbye to you, that the blessing of the Lord that makes rich and adds no sorrow is upon your life. You are the head and not the tail, above only and not beneath. You're not an overcomer. You're more than an overcomer. And I need you to spend the rest of this day, whether it's morning or night, you need to just walk around your room, your living room, your bedroom, your wherever you're watching, and just let the redeemed of the Lord say so. You need to say some stuff. You need to declare and decree some things in your life. You need to answer every assignment of the enemy with the word of the Lord that's in your mouth. We're praying for you, and we're decreeing that God's best is on you. Goodness and mercy is following you. You got to look over your shoulder and say, what is that? That's the blessing of the Lord. That's the goodness of God following you. And before we say goodbye to you, I want you to do me one small thing, please. If you've been blessed today, pass the blessing along. And let's get as many people that we can, as many people that we know, to receive from this word that has blessed you. We love you. Come on, somebody. Give God some praise. For a donation of $20 or more, we would like to thank you by sending you Pastor Jonathan's two-part series titled Blessed. Just visit our website and click the Donate Now link. And thank you for your support.